then this another dry topic corneal dystrophies but i will make it understood by you uh by touch basing common questions asked about corneal dystrophies okay doc now <clears throat> our current students are today online just find out huh very good very good now doctor corneal dystrophies in this it is basically inborn defect where there is a development of a corneal haze only cornea is affected nothing else is problem lens mein problem nahi hai retina mein kuch bhi nahi hai uvea mein kuch bhi nahi hai matlab cornea mein hai kya hai corneal haze and uh, you may say sir keratitis mein bhi corneal haze develop hota matlab usko dystrophy nahi bolte so without inflammation without vascularization development of a corneal haze defines corneal dystrophy there is no associated systemic disease thank god otherwise uh, like will merkensoni mark van nehle danlord which is anterior which is posterior what is alport syndrome there is no need of reading it uh, in the corneal dystrophy topic no association with systemic disease both the eyes are affected bilaterally first to second decade is the common age group where corneal dystrophies basically present themselves so this is how a cornea with dystrophy looks like there are a few varieties of corneal dystrophies their names are little annoying first i will go through how they look like this is called map dot fingerprint corneal dystrophy are you able to see map dot assume this is a globe of the world and map dot this is a granular dystrophy before doing what is called phototherapeutic keratectomy but this is after i don't think much difference is there there was a difference in the vision now how do you classify corneal dystrophies you know five layers of desmets membrane baumets membrane what else endothelium stroma hai na if you know what are the layers in cornea you know corneal dystrophy topic by be be relax if you don't know at least know now ha huh. so what is the classification we have superficial dystrophies if they involve epithelium and baumens layer you call superficial or anterior mainly two names you remember remaining ask your classmates to remember rees buchler and recurrent corneal erosion syndrome these two are examples of anterior dystrophies then you have dystrophies involving stroma granular lattice macular these are the three things you need to remember forget about this grunu type 1 what type 2 what unless examiner is very cruel he will he won't ask what is type 2 then don't remember this crystalline i didn't like the name now posterior dystrophy if it is involving endothelium and desmets membrane you call posterior dystrophy you have to remember these two names cornea guttata and fuchs epithelial endothelial dystrophy these two things you remember in posterior dystrophies why only they means mbbs level may that is within syllabus it is not out of syllabus now let us take up one two comments about each of them what is uh, epithelial basement membrane dystrophy what type of dystrophy it is anterior epithelial basement membrane dystrophy is anterior dystrophy it is also called cogons microcystic dystrophy another name you need to remember map dot i have shown you know how it looks like map dot fingerprint dystrophy is the other name given one reason you want to remember it is 
if i ask a question what is the most common of all the corneal dystrophies in the working age adults what is your answer cogans microcystic dystrophy which is also called epithelial basement membrane dystrophy okay doc but most cases are asymptomatic since it is most common they are asymptomatic another murphy's law most common entities generally will not be troubling lot of people rarer things will be very painful murphy's law i mean it can uh, it can be plus it, it need not be all this then what is reis buckler it is a ring shaped dystrophy involving the baumann's layer and it occurs in childhood generally corneal dystrophy occur in the second to third decade but this occurs in childhood most of the corneal dystrophies for that matter are autosomal dominant you don't need to remember it specifically only one corneal dystrophy is autosomal recessive and that is what exactly in entrance exam they will ask which one is the autosomal recessive one right but tell your friends that uh, this is autosomal dominant because they will also remember this so that their remembering burden will increase on the server server load jyada ho gaya to definitely he will fail in the exam hall right so let us from now only develop some techniques of how to make our classmates fail now how do they present why do they present to an ophthalmologist they will keep having recurrent corneal erosions a child having a recurrent corneal erosions and ultimately they develop a diffuse corneal scarring and uh, ultimately they require a corneal transplantation lamellar or penetrating keratoplasty <clears throat> then you have recurrent corneal erosion syndrome whenever there is a frequent trauma to the cornea by finger nail or a sharp edge these people develop this uh, corneal erosions and uh, it is the lack of the basement membrane and hemidesmosomes in the structure of the cornea which is underlying uh, problem in recurrent corneal erosion syndrome so they will have pain photophobia lacrimation blurring of vision on awakening in the morning subah so, udte hi there is md entrance exam but that day morning only he is having tears corneal edema everyone is saying why do you cry now only after exam you can cry no so but the problem is recurrent corneal erosion syndrome so hemidesmosomal absence commonly following trauma to the cornea in some people when they sleep their eyelids open half the way and some people have a habit of sleeping on the belly right so the pillow and cornea will be rubbing against each other and they develop they by the time they morning wake up they will have erosions now macular dystrophy this you need to remember because it is the only corneal dystrophy which is autosomal recessive which is frequently asked as a mcq in the exam then uh, muco polysaccharidosis hurler hunter you have huge variety no they will have this macular dystrophy basically and it occurs in childhood between 5 to 10 and they also require a penetrating keratoplasty then lattice dystrophy you need to remember for one buzzword amyloid deposits will be found in lattice dystrophy lattice dystrophy is a stromal or posterior or anterior let me check your quick memory it is posterior i don't remember let me check oh lattice is stromal doctor i thought uh, you will remember better than me huh after another half an hour i will forget that's called corneal dystrophy topic very dry cornea of the patient is dry and a medical student's memory is dry that's called corneal dystrophy huh no problem no problem now lattice dystrophy is a stromal one doctor huh 
now typically uh, it also requires penetrating keratoplasm cornea gustata of worked so which type of uh, dystrophy is posterior huh good good so uh, other way you can remember stromal dystrophy is more often require penetrating keratoplasty stroma is the core of the cornea no now it is the posterior surface of the decimates membrane where the dystrophy typically is there and you find drop like excrescences in this context you need to know one more new word hazel henle's bodies you know one secret about uh, uh the growth of a child and language development by 7th year 90% of our vocabulary establishes a child when he grows by 7th year 90% jo bhi hum baat kar rahe hain abhi we learned it in 7th year but for medical students even after 7 years leaving medical college also if mdc they did not get means new terminology they need to keep learning right so doctor what are hazel henle's bodies this another uh, rare atypical question in the entrance basically any aging individual if you look at their cornea in the peripheral part of the cornea more so in the aged females you find these excrescences called hazel henle's body similar kind of excrescences in the decimates membrane are found in the cornea gutata between periphery and center of the retina i mean cornea what is important always center is always important whether it is retina cornea lens or anything so that is the reason treatment is usually not required because it rarely affects the vision since it involves the periphery more so then two three comments about fugues epithelial endothelial dystrophy it is a male predominant fifth to seventh decade but one reason you need to remember is primary open angle glaucoma which corneal dystrophy it has a common association when that is the quiz question in count banega pg pati immediately what will you say fugues epithelial endothelial dystrophy so this we need to know a little more extensively in fugue epithelial endothelial dystrophy initially there is a stage of cornea gutata there uh, the patient has got hazel henle type of excrescences and uh, uh this uh, uh degeneration in the cornea typically has got a beaten metal appearance that is another important reason we need to remember fugues epithelial endothelial dystrophy in its initial stage beaten metal appearance it is called as then there is an advanced stage bullous keratopathy stage and ultimately a scarring stage and how do you treat it doctor if it is bullous keratopathy stage it is an indication for placing a bandage soft contact and uh, when the visual acuity is reduced then penetrating keratoplasty need to be basically done so that's all the story so which are stromal which are anterior which are posterior you need to know in that six to seven types of corneal dystrophies which is autosomal recessive type which is associated with glaucoma which is the most common type what else which is associated with uh, trauma to the eye uh, so these are all the things which are given in the notes for you doctor very good